Today on Lockdown Red Wings, their four-game winning streak is snapped, but the Red Wings played pretty darn well in that hockey game. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I am a podcast producer for the Daily J, WWJ News Radio podcast. Well, Scotty is a freelance journalist for the Detroit News, as well as the host of Lockdown Tigers. And uh, like I said in the cold open, guys, the Detroit Red Wings lost to the Toronto Maple Leafs 4-2, to two, uh, snapping their four-game winning streak. But, you know... And we we don't we talk about how there's no moral victories this year, and you just want to go out there and win hockey games. We also talk about how this is going to be a real litmus test to see how far in the rebuild the Red Wings are. And you look at the scoreboard; it's it's kind of the reverse of what happened in the game against the Coyotes, scoreboard wise, where you looked at the scoreboard against the Coyotes and you lost and you won what four to three in a shootout. But you look at the stat sheet and you go, oh my gosh, you dominated them. It was actually the same situation here, but the score was reversed. You lost four to two. But in a lot of facets, you actually heavily outplay the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, the Maple Leafs did a lot of good things to shut you down and stop you from scoring goals. And I will not take that away from the Toronto Maple Leafs because they are a very good hockey team. But this was a very close game throughout. And the Red Wings had an edge in almost every category by the end of the game. Yeah, I I think the Wings looked really good. And you're right. We did going into this game. Like we had a conversation where we were talking about the – after this game, we would have kind of a, I don't want to say a better idea, but we would have some sense of, uh, you know, how close we were to the top teams. And you want to compare yourself to the best teams in the NHL and whatnot. And um, I, I I know that they gave up four goals and they ended up losing by, by two, but I really feel pretty like good. No, I, don't, I don't know. I don't ever feel like good after losses. So I don't know if I want to say that, but I I feel about as good as I possibly could after a loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like I think that this is this is probably mindset wise my best case scenario. This was a a a really really solid performance. I, I thought the offense was honestly like borderline phenomenal. I, I thought they looked really good. They were consistently applying pressure. Uh, now finishing is a whole whatever you believe it's a step in development, whether you think it was just an off night, whatever, putting the puck in the back of the net was was probably a little bit more of a struggle than it should have been at times, given the opportunities and the chances that they had, especially at the end of the first and probably and at the end of the third, I guess. But um, all in all, I, I thought this was a really solid offensive performance. And I also thought that it was a, you know, we'll get into and break it down further, but I thought it was a pretty solid defensive performance too. I mean, I have very few qualms with this hockey game. A lot of the reasons why I think that the Red Wings lost this hockey game have to more have more to do with how Toronto played against you than how you performed yourself. But I mean, I think there is one huge elephant in the room that we have to address as to why the Red Wings lost this game. And it's something that we haven't been able to see say at all this year in regards to him. But you know, Vili Husso went out there in his sixth consecutive start, and he laid an egg. And I'm not going to sit here and persecute the guy over it. He's made five consecutive very good starts. And in this sixth one, it looked like the fatigue finally got to him. The first two goals against, I won't give him too much of crap for because, one, Austin Matthews in the high slot, that's his wheelhouse. Austin Matthews has an incredible shot, and he's going to score that like nine times out of the ten when he's got no pressure and no traffic in front of him. The second goal, the William Nylander one off to the side of the net, off a rebound. I mean, that he made the initial save. But the two after that, the one to Marner and uh, the one to um, – it's, it's escaping me who got that last one. But, you know, those were weaker was- goals that came from spots where they shouldn't have scored. And those were on him, and that put the game out of reach for the Detroit Red Wings early in the second period. Yeah, Nylander, right? Nylander, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I, think that, man, like, it, it, it's uh, – you want to walk a line because he's been so good this season. <laughs> like, like oh, going yeah. into this 
going into this game, he he had literally had one bad performance like all year. And so uh, it, it's certainly not some like, oh, my goodness, you know, who so stinks and get him out of that. He should lose the starting job. Like we're not going to it's it's one game and it's a one game against a very, very good offense and a very, very good hockey team at that. So, yeah, while, while it's certainly not what we expected because he's been so good. And while it's also certainly not what we wanted and, and if he had played, you know, normal who so levels, then uh, we, we might be talking about a game that the wings made a lot even more competitive than they did or even took into overtime. So um, yeah, I, I mean, not great. And, and is probably the biggest con in this game. I, I would say, I mean, that they really aren't too many elsewhere. Like I, there aren't too many, like drastic at least cons outside of Huso, and for whatever it's worth when ned came in i thought he looked really solid and yeah, that's 16 saves on 16 shots yeah and, and that that's something that we also have really needed because ned we, we've talked about his uh especially in the first you know month of the season his struggles so uh yeah i, I mean it, it certainly wasn't a a very great performance but also like not all four goals were entirely his fault that i'd say one of them for sure the one that just he he wasn't able to to you know just kind of squeaked by him and got to the back of the net he probably wishes he had that one back but um like austin matthews in in the high slot is kind of a death sentence for any goalie in the nhl no matter how good you are and um yeah i, I don't know i i well it it wasn't a, a great performance but it also like it's not like every goal that went in you were like oh Huso is like so terrible, and like that's all his fault tonight. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it, even his quote unquote like bad performances, it like it, it still wasn't some dreadful, you know, everything that we got put on net he let in either. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to, I'm not coming out here to persecute him, you know, prosecute him, whatever you want to say. He has been <laughs> the number one reason why the Red Wings are, were at least at the time, third in the Atlantic Division. But I think yeah. it's also fair to say that he played poorly in this game. He's not immune Agreed. to it just because of the performances he's had in the past. But the performances he's had in the past allow me to give him the benefit of the doubt to say that's just a one-night thing. Because so far this season, he has been such a boon for this team. And he has been fantastic. So he had a bad night tonight. That's fine. We talked about what the Red Wings needed to do to win this hockey game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it was, you had to play a perfect hockey game. And you played a near perfect hockey game outside of that and your special teams, which is funny because that's normally how you, where you thrive. <laughs> it's but hockey will do yeah, hockey, hockey will, <laughs> at this at the same time. It's not that surprising when you look at the team that you're up against. For sure. Toronto Maple Leafs are, if any team is going to make your special teams falter, it's going to be the Toronto Maple Leafs. And we talked about it. The power play was mid tier, but the penalty kill was very good. So, you know, this is, this is the other, other way around, around other but, way around. Yeah. Their power play is very good, but the penalty kills mid tier, but their penalty kill has a lot of tape on how you run it. And you only run it really one specific way. And it's pass around passing along the perimeter and then a pass through the middle for a one timer. And then hope your guy down low tries to bury the rebound. That's pretty much the Red Wings power play to a T and they played that exceptionally well against the Detroit Red Wings. They were very aggressive on the penalty kill. Um, making it so that the Red Wings power play had no room to breathe. The Red Wings power play went 0 for 3. Meanwhile, the Toronto Maple Leafs went 1 for 2 on their own. So, you know, they took advantage of their opportunities and they stopped you from taking advantage of yours. It's Those are the things, those are the reasons why this Red Wings lost this game is Huso didn't have, wasn't on his top game and your special teams didn't show up. But like we said, and we're focusing on the negatives here, early because they did lose this game. And I feel like that's appropriate, but there were a ton of positives from this game. One of the things you brought up already, Scotty was just how close they played the Toronto Maple Leafs throughout the game and just kept playing. And we'll talk about all of those pros. Um, but first I think we got to talk to the people about battle line. Betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball, to soccer and esports. They've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at betonline as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, 
where the game starts. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Um, Scotty, do you want to talk at all about the special teams? I kind of blew through it to get to the ad break, but you want to comment on how the special teams played in this loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs? Yeah, I guess. I, I, I mean, honestly, I think more so like, y- yes, you, you know, you gave up a power play goal and, and that was something that you, you have really at points this season hung your hat on as like a, a specialty for this hockey team. But I think that it's the defense was just weird, whether it was the penalty kill or whether it was five on five. Like it it was just uh, that's the thing that really stood out more to me was just how like uniquely weird of a defensive performance it was because there was solid defense played. Like if you're looking over the course of 60, you're like, all right, that was a pretty like solid defensive performance. I thought, but there were, certain plays that were really high danger, like really high danger. And like Ned stopped a couple and Husso even made a couple of like really solid saves of like one-on-one opportunities in the slot or like even uh, there was one right in front of the net. Like it it wasn't, it it was weird. (laughs) Like it was, it was just a weird defensive performance where like you didn't give up too many shots. You pushed them to the outside for a majority of the night. And sometimes they beat you on the outside, which we've talked about a ton this season and how the Wings have pretty consistently got beaten around the outside. But I also think that there there was just like, I don't know, like seven to nine plays <laughs> that probably accumulated total for a like total amount of time of like 90 seconds where I was just like, what on earth <laughs> is the defense doing? And like, most well not most I I guess most of them didn't result in goals like they were able to snuff most of it but um whether it was goalie play or just like you like there was one where Tavares had a wide open opportunity in the slot and the puck just bounced over his stick too like like stuff like that would happen or it would result in a goal and like I, I I don't know it was it was just weird and I guess that's just like what comes with the territory of playing Toronto like they have a, a a very very good offense and don't need to have forty five shots to score four goals because they're so good at what they do and have so many snipers on their team. So maybe it was just that, but I, that was more so than the special teams. Even like that, that was something that really was strange. I I, I guess to me, and I guess that is lumped in with the penalty kill too. I thought that that kind of was all grouped into one. I think a lot of what you're, you're describing was just pure heart and effort out of the Detroit Red Wings in that game. Cause you're right. There were a lot of weird plays where it wasn't conventional defense, where it was kind of a little bit scrambly on their part, especially right out in front of their own net. I remember a play late in the game where Tavares had the puck right in front of Nadalkovic with no pressure. And I can't remember the defender that was right there, but just started like pushing on him. And Tavares was trying to be patient. And Nadalkovic like launched out and like covered it. Yeah, it was yeah, really yeah. unconventional defense. Um, but, you know, the team didn't give up. And I think that's the my biggest takeaway from this game is early on in the second period, it had the looks and the makings of another blowout. Um, and we've seen two of those against the Red Wings this season. Well, I, well, we've seen multiple, but two big ones this season, one at the hands of the Sabres and one at the hands of uh, the Rangers. And this had the makings of that down four one with over halfway to go left in the game. I'm looking at this and going, oh, my gosh, it's going to be eight to one, eight to two game. But they didn't give up. In fact, from there on out, they continue to out shoot out chance the Toronto Maple Leafs in every facet. I mean, you look at their expected goals for percentage, their Corsi, their Fenwick, whatever metric you want to choose. They out shot attempted the, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. They had a 75%, 58% and 75% one, two and three period for a total of 68.54% overall for Corsi four percentage. And then their expected goals for percentage. When you look at the quality of those shot attempts, it was a little bit down, but still, 59.21% in edge at quality shot attempts at five on five in those three periods. So there was, a, there was a lot to like in how this game was played by the Red Wings. And obviously we know the shot totals. They heavily outshot the Toronto Maple Leafs, even at five on five, 35 shots to 20 shots at five on five and a game total of what was it like 46 to 25, something like that. You have it up right in front of you. I know that. Yeah, no, 44-25. 44-25, so 20-shot edge 
by the end of that game. I, they, so they were all over the place and laid it all out on the ice and defensively too, like offensively they're producing shots and producing shot attempts, but defensively they were great as well. Oscar Sundquist in this game. In fact, that line number three of Michael Rasmussen, Adam Ernie, and Oscar Sundquist somehow. Shout out Adam Ernie. Shout out Adam Ernie. The big hitter. He's going out (laughs) there. He's, 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 He's going out there and lowering the shoulder. Finishing checks, baby. Now at five on five, that line only had eight minutes of ice time, but they were responsible for 13 shot attempts for two shot attempts to get against when they were on the ice and expected goals against was zero. So they had an expected goals for percentage of a hundred percent as a line in this game. And Oscar Sundquist himself had an expected goals for percentage of 100%. And he was one of, there were three players in this game, Scotty, who are not out there for a single shot against, not a shot attempt, but not a single shot against in this game. Oscar Sundquist didn't provide a lot of offense in this game. I, he only had an expected goals for of 0.31, but a zero expected goals against and zero shots against in this game. And then the other two top ones, Oli Mata and Phil Peronik both had zero shot attempts against in this game and had expected goals for percentage of a 95 and 91 percentage as they continue to be the best defenseman on the defensive pairing on this team. Now, granted, the responsibilities are a bit different from that top pair, but in the minutes they're getting, they are incredibly effective. Yeah. And so it's it just PB and J peanut butter and jelly. That's what that pairing is. It just furthers that the Red Wings lost four to two, but they played super well, both offensively and defensively. You know, I, I, it's just, it's just one of those games where you can do almost everything right. Cause I said, they'd have to play a perfect game to beat Toronto and they didn't, but they did a lot right. And they did a lot of what they usually do pretty poorly, really well. And they just two really soft goals sank them. And that's just how hockey goes. That's how you, that hockey goes sometimes. That is how that hockey goes sometimes. No, and like like you said, it was a it was a it was a good, solid team performance for real. I, I mean, there was um, man. I, I honestly, at one point, I I remember the the Adam Ernie hit, and that got me kind of fired up. Not that he like laid him out or anything, but just kind of like pushed him into the bench and got, <laughs> knocked the knocked the bucket off a little bit. I don't know. I, I uh, Adam Ernie, I think he had like four or five hits tonight, and yeah, like the. The wings were more physical. Mm-hmm. I thought that again. Like I, I'll reiterate again. Like twenty-five they, hits to eighteen. By the way, they out- yeah, like they points. they were um, d- defensively. I, I thought even with the physicality, like they were smart about it, and uh, they were able to. Again, there were there were probably you know five to nine ish, like really high danger, like right in the slot opportunities. But for the most part, over the course of sixty, like they were able to push plays to the outside a lot uh it, i don't like it, i don't know man it's it's just it's so weird because we talked about we were like yeah you know this will be kind of the the test and we'll see if we're super far away or if we're you know maybe closer than we think to competing or whatnot and this is one of the first real big tests of the year against like a perennial cup well president's cup contender <laughs> um, but like it, it's just it's it's one of those weird things where like we we lost by two we were down three at one point and i'm walking out of the game and i'm like i feel like that wasn't like that bad like i feel like we kind of hung with them and, and maybe even outplayed them for here uh like a like a legitimate part of, of the game i don't know you want to know why the Toronto Maple Leafs won this game besides who so giving up two softies? The Toronto Maple Leafs had 23 blocked shots in this game, and the Red Wings had five. 23 blocked shots. So the Red Wings had 44 make it to the net. They had another 23 that were blocked. Yeah, like that, <laughs> which is insane. Like, even if – think about even if half of those ended up going on net. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a you're talking about a 50 piece for shots on goal, man. Like, it, it, it was, uh, it, yeah, and I, you know, I I focused a lot defensively because that's been an area that we've talked about, like needed to improve so much. But on the offensive side of the puck, too, man, like this was a a real that thing that I've been complaining about all season. Like this team lacks 
any sort of consistent five on five, like offensive zone pressure and stuff. Like the last, I don't know, five entire minutes of the first period and pretty much the entire end of the third period, they were consistently attacking the net. They were consistently getting shots on net and they were in Toronto's zone for a large majority of, of those times. And like, that's not to say that they, they didn't have other offensive, um, uh, forgetting the word that they also did that at other points in the game is what I'm trying to say, but they, uh, I don't know, like the the offense looked really good uh, at five on five. The defense looked really good at five on five. Those are two things that we've talked about a lot that they've needed to improve on. And yes, it's a loss, but again, like when comparing ourselves to the best teams in the NHL and comparing ourselves to the good teams, um, I, I would say this was a, a, like solid effort. And I liked what I saw for the most yeah. part. Like it's we, just, it's we, weird. Cause we lost by two. We're down by three at one point, but like, that's real. Like I, I, I was, I was pretty, pretty pleased outside of again, like five to seven defensive sets. <laughs> well, like you, like you were saying, you, you're talking about it, this being a test for the Red Wings and whether or not they pass or they fail. And you, you hate to look at a loss four to two loss and say, I think they may have passed the test. And, but I mean, with how they came out and how they played this game, I almost want to say that they did pass this test. I mean, they outshot attempted the tip of Toronto Maple Leafs in all situations, 73 to 33. The Red Wings took 73 shot attempts and the Maple Leafs only had 33 in this game. I, it's just, and it's not just about the offense, it's about the defense too. Like I said, when Oscar Sundquist, Oli Mata, and Phil Pronick are on the ice, there were no shot attempts against or no shots against on the goalie. And it's just, so they played well defensively. They played well offensively. The only thing that faltered was their special teams and who so. And most nights, those things are what's going to be secure. So if you can combine good five on five play with what's normally been doing super well for you, and you're going to be a good team. The only difference here again was the Maple Leafs blocked a ton of shots. Like they just dove in front of them. They blocked so many. And I think that the Maple Leafs were pretty effective at stifling your zone entry as well as they played a really effective one three one neutral zone play and at the Red Wings being a team that likes to get attempts off the rush. Yeah. Just was very capable of stopping you before you could get that rush opportunity. Um, but we got to go do another quick break. When we come back, we'll finish up any remaining sh- uh, conversation we have about this game, but also talk about those reverse retros. Cause it was the first game which the Red Wings wore them. And apparently, well, I knew I was, but still the minority on that opinion. Uh, on my opinion on them, but we'll talk about that when we come back on Lockdown Red Wings. Segment three, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. What are you doing? I just want to make you small. Oh, just because for once you have the power. <laughs> well, now you got to move me back to the. There you go. <laughs> have too much fun. He has the power today, guys, uh, for unknown reasons. I do. Um, I, I have the power I for, for once. I have the ability to mess with Brian's camera. <laughs> I've, I've, re- I've restrained myself a lot these first 23 minutes. So, Morris Satter had a golden assist in this game, Scotty. He looked, he looked pretty good. Great. He looked really he good. He looked great. And, and uh, I, I think that, you know, everybody talked about like the drought he had kind of at the start of the season where he wasn't getting, you know, he didn't have a goal. And now that I know that that was kind of like a push in scramble in front of the net type of goal, but still, I, I think that, you know, seal is broken. Hopefully that helps production going forward. I mean, I honestly think the assist he had was more impressive than the goal he had. The, the, the skating along the blue line and that little move he made to surprise a shot towards the net and then Adam Ernie with a nice deflection. I mean, that was more vintage Moritz, a vintage Moritz cider. Can I say that? He's a sophomore. Yes, that was absolutely more, can. That, that was more vintage Moritz cider than the goal was just because he, we're so used to seeing, seeing him make those types of moves on the I didn't even know he line. scored the goal until like two minutes after. We were like, was it Larkin? Was it cider? Was it Larkin? Was it cider? For that one. So, and then Kubelik got an, a point in this game. And he looked great. He had seven shots. Seven, seven shots. shots. So, like, this... I get, I, I guess just to summarize, Perron had like game, four or five. Yeah, there were a lot of guys who had like four or five shots because there was a lot of shots in this game. Yeah, there were a lot of shot attempts. It was Bergeron had four shots. Um, Ernie had four shots. Kubelik had seven. Larkin had four. Perron had five. 
And then Wallman had four. So, I mean, this team, Red Wings offense and defense showed up in this game. Huso did not. Special teams did not. That was really what made the difference in this game. They played well. They just lost. And that happens sometimes. And that's okay. Because they're not going to win every single game. As long as they fight hard, I'm happy. Yes. 100% agree. So You want to talk about the jerseys? I do want to talk about the jerseys. They're pretty cool. I love them. <laughs> oh. Good conversation. All right. <laughs> I mean, look, that's tomorrow. it. Like, we love them. Everybody else hates them. What? No, I mean, that's literally what really I mean, like, And there are people on Twitter. I, obviously, you know, Jake Rivard uh, likes them. He's been seeing their praises. Prashant Jake Iyer Rivard likes them. Dog. But Ryan of Grindline doesn't like them. He's been very adamant about how much he hates them. Uh, Jim Costa doesn't like them. He told me it was an L take when I said that anyone who doesn't like them is wrong. But so, I mean, it's very divisive, but for the most part, I feel like you and I are in the minority on how they look super nice. And I, I stand by that. I think full uni, they look even sharper. They're just so sharp in my opinion. I think they look great with the full kit. Yeah. And I thought they looked great on the ice. And I think that uh, I know a lot of people don't like him. I know that we're in the minority with the the opinion that they're cool, but like I really like them a lot, and I think that they they have only grown on me since initial reaction. Yeah, honestly, they've grown on me too. Like initial reaction, you and I were like, yeah, these are cool and like whatever, but more and more and more and as they wear them more and as we see them more they have only grown on me i i don't know man i i think they're cool and i think that they're a jersey that in like five years from now people are going to look back and be like oh that was actually pretty cool and i should have not been so grumpy about everything i mean i still stand by i think i agree with like everyone that they would look better if it was red and white and with the white stripe rather than oh, the well, black stripe sure, but that's I, like happened before because it's looked so good yeah and but i my opinion on this is that you can't have your cake and eat it too and when the last reverse retros came out, everyone said it was boring and that they didn't take a risk. They were scared and that this sucked and they did suck and they were boring and they didn't take a risk. Yeah. And so this time no around one's trying to argue that last year's were good. <laughs> yeah. And so Adidas this time around took a risk and took a chance and they put some black in there. And I think that for a Jersey, they're going to wear eight times and then never wear it again. Y'all can suck it up. Like, I'm sorry. It, they're going to wear it eight times. And then it's not like it's replacing their home and away jerseys. It's fine, guys. They're going to wear it eight times. You can you can writhe, and, but just like they're never going to wear it again after this season. I think as a, an experimental jersey, the one where they took a risk, did something different with the Red Wings uniform for the first time in their history, that's fine. Because the point of this jersey was to not be a classic. <laughs> Like that right. was the point. You're Reverse reversing the retro. retro. The whole yeah. point was literally to be the opposite of a retro jersey. <laughs> so yeah. Like, I, yes, I, I, thought, I, I thought they were cool. I agree that the white stripe would look better, and I'll never deny that. But just like eight I don't games, think guys. Saying that of a, white wouldn't look better, but that yeah. doesn't mean that black looks bad. Yeah, and like that's the thing Those is the other the other side of the argument thing. is that black is the Blackhawks color. I'm like, okay, and we can do it better than them. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like it's great. I, I don't like the fact that the Blackhawks and the Red Wings ones look super similar. I do think no, that that's is the kind only of lame. legitimate gripe to it is that they are very similar, but red and black legitimately looks good. And I get it's not a Red Wings color, but I'm just like, it's fine. They're going to wear them eight times and never wear them again. You guys will survive. Seven left. <laughs> Seven more times you'll have to suffer. <laughs> and it's like, you guys are fine. I, thought, You're I really did think they look good on the ice, though. I did, too. And I, I think they picked a good opponent for it, right? Like, original six. You knew it was going to be a, a packed house because Toronto travels so well. Like, they picked a, a, a heck of a debut. And, I yeah, I thought they looked fine. Yeah. And... You know, if it wasn't a Red Wing, if it weren't the Red Wings, if this wasn't the Red Wings uniform, people would think they'd look really good. But because it's got the name Red Wings attached, I think there's a, an automatic, like, uh, um, just, I don't want to say stigma, assumption on how it should look. That's really what it comes down to. But they look so good. They look so Agreed. good out there on the ice. And uh, if you don't agree, you're wrong. What? 
Wow. I don't know about that, but, but okay, there you go. There you That's go. what I said Ryan, on Twitter. And that's why I'm getting ratioed right now. So big guy. <laughs> no, you guys are absolutely entitled to your own opinion. Um, and yeah, you're allowed to not like them. That's the whole fun. Um, but I like them and Scotty likes them and our opinions matter. So <laughs> you're really just going after it today. Eh? I'm just having fun. Everyone knows I'm kidding. They should. Uh, but yeah, that's going to about do it, man. Yeah. Anything else? Game? Uh, I don't no. think so. No, I think we covered everything I want to talk about. It really, like literally, we, we got down to everything in this episode. Tomorrow's episode should be fun. Uh, yes, it should be, but I don't want to tease it too much because no, I know. I'm just things saying have happened be before. Fun. It should be one of the more fun I, episodes. Hard, we've one done. of the more fun episodes we've ever done. It assuming that it comes to fruition and it should be things are scheduled but schedules yeah, it should change be fun. so we have that really, then really we have a <laughs> game on wednesday against the sabers against buffalo oh. and then we have vegas on saturday vegas on saturday nidelkovich is probably starting right this was actually imagine. We were just about to wrap up, but this is actually something I do want to bring up. Nedeljkovic has a legitimate opportunity to gain some ground back here because Huso just had a bad start finally. And Nedeljkovic came in relief against the Maple Leafs. And Who was in net in the 8-2 to two Buffalo game? Ned. And then it was Huso against the Rangers. Okay, okay. So this is like prime. Like, hey, don't get shelled by Buffalo again. I believe <laughs> this is Ned's first start at home. I don't think Nedeljkovic has had a single Good start at home gracious, yet this season. Really? Yeah, you might be right. Mm -hmm. So Damn. this this could be a big game for him to Dang. make up some ground because he's coming in relief of Huso and had a good relief appearance. And then if he goes out and plays really well against Buffalo, then Lalone has a question of who does he start against Vegas? The guy who's playing really well or the guy who was consistently good up until recently? And now right. now you've put yourself back in Lalone's mind. So this is this right. game against Buffalo on Wednesday is going to be a big one for him. I agree. Uh, yeah, and. and I don't know. There's some argument, I guess, for like put Huso back out there so that he can like regain confidence. But if you do that, then like Ned's getting Vegas. Like one of the next two will be Ned. And I think mm -hmm. I agree with you. I think it will be Buffalo. So um, yeah. that, yeah, just kind of piggybacking off our goalie schedule conversation from yesterday. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, guys, with a new episode. Hopefully, be a real exciting. Bet online. One. Same time. Same place. It's your team. Every day. Hit the button, Scotty.